eternal God, the source and giver of life, the destiny towards whom all life flows. We have gathered in this memorial park this afternoon to dedicate this monument inscribed with the names of Marines, sailors, and soldiers who have paid the ultimate price of freedom by giving their lives for our freedom and the freedom of the Iraqi people. Let our spirits be proud of them. Let our hearts be compassionate and our minds clear and determined in giving them honor and respect. Let us be dependent on the loving kindness of our Lord and our God. As we remember the peoples whose names are marked on this monument, let us be true Marines, sailors, and soldiers in war and in peace. Let us be courageous protectors and true guardians of freedom. Let us be the true masters of brotherly we love. Let this day be a day of commemoration and honor to those who sacrificed their lives in order to give us liberty and our nation's security. Remember them, O Lord, in your mercy. Have compassion on us and on the families of the fallen. Make us a generation of wisdom, discipline, and good faith. In your name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Good afternoon, General Walhauser, General Nicholson, uh, distinguished guests and friends from the local community, Marines, sailors, soldiers, airmen, and family members. I'll talk to you a little bit about the Memorial Park. It's a kind of it's a special piece of ground that we're on here. I was able to talk to Marines who were stationed at San Mateo decades ago. Actually, when 7th Marines was here, they called it 7th Heaven. And this piece of ground was used as a rendezvous point for squads that were doing the patrolling in the area. It also had a, a, a reference point, a datum point for land navigation. So many of the lost Marines had stumbled to this spot to find his way to get his go for that particular event. It was also used by company first sergeants for pay. Before we had direct deposit, we had to go see the company first sergeant and put up a table, and you'd come and see him, and he would make what the government owed, and he would give you what was left. Now, there's a story that if during the week prior to payday, your particular company was good, payment was made here, and if not, You'd have to meet them on top of that hill. <laughs> they also used this location for company formations to pass troop information. They used this for cookouts, uh, barbecues for the families. Uh, they did safety briefs here before Marines were released for leave and liberty. And as a result, families often met Marines here as they got in the cars and drove off. For their, for their leave and liberty holidays. Marines often met their girlfriends here, and I'm told that a wedding actually took place here. And through the, this uh, habitual use of this, this particular piece of terrain, there was a, an effort started, to the best of my knowledge, in 2002 to put a memorial park here. I found some emails from the Regimental Executive Officer at the time, Lieutenant Colonel Pat Mooney, who later became the commander of the Dark Horse Battalion 3-5 and led it to Iraq for its third consecutive combat tour. Uh, he started the initiative under then Colonel uh, Joe Dunford, now General Dunford, who was the regimental commander. That's when it started, 2002. Uh, Colonel Stunavar, the subsequent regimental commander, picked up that initiative and under his tutelage, they, uh, they did the planning and the groundbreaking took place in February of 2004 and the park was dedicated in July of 2004. And I believe Colonel Navarre is here with his wife, Diana, uh, and he's recently retired with 31 years of honest and faithful service to the Marine Corps. It was very much Colonel Navarre that, that took this memorial park in place. This memorial park is very much about 5th Marines and Regimental Combat Team 5. The Regimental Combat Team is the de designation 
that is placed on a regiment when it deploys into the combat zone and it has its attachments become part of it. Tanks, artillery, Amtraks, and all those things that make us the Marine Air Ground Task Force. Quite frankly, it's the sledgehammer of war. When the, the nation needs fighting done, the regiments turn into RCTs, and this regiment has small markers around here, around this park, that denote the battles that it, that it has taken place in. Bella Wood, the counterinsurgency in Nicaragua and Cuba. Uh, World War II, really horrific battles. Guadalcanal, New Guinea, Halleluja, Okinawa. This regiment had a particular, particularly important role in the Korean War. It's a monument just to the side here. You read it, it mentions the Pusan perimeter. And it was when the freedom of the Korean people was pressed down into a very small, narrow place called Pusan. It's called the Pusan perimeter. It was called the Pusan punch bowl for those that were in it. And this regiment was called together, put on ships, within days, literally sailed across the ocean. And with its, its uh, performance, Protecting the perimeter of the Pusan punch bowl is known as the fire brigade because it went from point to point. But the essence of that is this regiment saved the country from the darkness of communism. This went on into the, the, uh, the Seoul landing at Incheon, taking the Seoul Womodi Island into the Chosen Reservoir, and then years fighting in the trench warfare uh, that took place in the Eastern and Western Front along the 38th parallel. So take a look at these hills behind us. Take your pick. Triple canopy jungle, triple canopy jungle with uh, coral um, mountains and caves and formations, which place in Peleliu. Mountains like this, such as existed in Okinawa, or in Korea, mountains like this covered with snow and temperatures minus 40 degrees. And that is what the men of this regiment fought in. And they won. And, and, and they are immor immortalized here at this park. Uh, this history of the, of the fighting fifth continues into Vietnam, places like Rung, Rung Sat, Ubai, Chulai, Operation Swift, uh, where Chaplain Capadano, who was the chapel behind us, is named after lost his life and, and received the Medal of Honor. This, this continued into Desert Storm and, des and, uh, and then myriad contingency operations around the world. And now into the war on terrorism and in particular Operation Iraqi Freedom. But I would also tell you that this park is more than just the 5th Marines and RCT-5. This park is about the most radical experiment that the world has seen. It started 3,750 miles to the east on the eastern coast of this nation in 1775. It's an, an experiment that is uh, best exemplified by Jeffersonian democracy. The cornerstone of Jeffersonian democracy is self-determination, whether it's an individual or if it's a nation. And what you see here is a manifestation of young men who heard the people's right of self-determination was being denied somewhere in the world. And they put down their civilian life, they picked up a weapon, they joined this regiment, and they went somewhere to fight for someone else for something that they held near and dear to themselves. The idea of freedom. That you have the right to determine what you do as an individual. You have the right to do as a government, as a nation, as a culture. 